After a storm in the night, it is finally cool after the heat wave of the last few days. But apparently Philip and I just can't get enough of the heat because today we're going to go and visit his parents on holiday in the south of France where it is torrid heat. And it's quite funny because the two of us have just been shying away from the heat the last few days and now finally it's fallen. We're going to get some more sun. You look absolutely ravishing. Wow. Thank yes. You. I don't think I've ever been called that before. <laughs> <laughs> what a lovely colour. Thank you. Is this new? Uh, yes, yes, yes. You've done very well recently. Excellent choices. Thank you. Lancelot's taking me on my morning walk and it really is that way round. He takes me. Which way are we going, darling? There's evidence of poor Thor losing his feathers absolutely everywhere. They're just littering the ground. Ah, yes. Lancelot has found his chicken. Before I go, let's see how amory has been getting on in Ariette. <coughs> yeah. I think you're coming down with what I had. I know you always say you're never sick and your body is just expelling the illness, but that is just what happens when you're sick. And you definitely look as though you're coming down with it. I'm trying not let it catch a hold. Yeah, but that's what I thought. And actually, if you don't stop, it, it really lingers. So you should just go to bed. I know you're not going to. No. We've built out the, um, the high in the mortar mm. for the framing so that we can insulate it, try and deaden the sound of next door and the uh, hallway for when people are walking, so it always says they can hear. Everything. everything. So if someone's in a room next door, they can hear every word of the TV programme someone's watching and hear. Yeah. yeah. So with the insulation and the new plasterboard, it's going to deaden the sound and also, one, keep the heat out because of the yeah. minute stifling. Yeah. And then come winter time because we're going to be insulated between the rafters and then on top of the uh, rafters. So we're going to have double insulation. On yeah. Because that's just such a loss of heat going through there. And then when it, yesterday when it was so warm, you touch the slates to the point where you can't actually hold <gasps> them because they're that hot. Yeah. So it's, it's needed. Yeah, I know because I was in the attic yesterday and it's the same thing. It's just an inferno up there. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so uh, just going to build some mark out for the stud work for this wardrobe and then for this, which isn't a wardrobe, it's more of a shelving area. Yeah. But you want it on here. It'll still have a, co a cover on it, yeah. So that's the, the idea is that these bits will have um, wardrobes built in so that we won't have that dark area we had before. And the same on the other side. And then they will be decorated exactly the same way as the rest of the walls, so the doors will be hidden. Yeah. Oh, cool, amazing. Well, you've, got, you've done loads. Continue the uh, panelling on the doors as well, so there. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to look gorgeous. Yeah, it's going to nice. So yeah, I'll finish the framework and then I'll probably insulate the roof, board out the wardrobes. Yeah. And then... <coughs> and then go through the rest of the wall. Amory, seriously, wall. you need to no, stop. That's just a tickle. Yeah, I know, I know, but seriously, I've just been there. I know. Okay. Good luck. Cheers. See you when I get See back. Bye. Bye. Extremely irritatingly, you're making naan bread that I'm going to miss. <laughs> Mind you, the rate we're doing, we will never leave before it's made anyway. <laughs> Is it going to be garlic naan? Yeah, so I've already kneaded it, so I'm just mixing it's in the garlic. It's all like garlic. Just mixing it. Is that how garlic. you do? You actually put the garlic into the actual... I thought you just rubbed garlic on it. I didn't realise it went through it. No, it's going into the dough, but then obviously, once they're done, mm -hmm. I put... Uh, melted butter and a bit of garlic on, on top, top as well. Double garlic hit. Yeah. Oh, yum. We're up in Mummy and Percy's apartment because you have strict instructions from them of what you need to pack. Yes, I pack all of Percy's stuff, but I'm trying to figure out what to pack for your mother. Percy sent you a list saying, like, this is here, yes. this is here, this is here, this is exactly what I need. And Mummy just said, pack me some pretty summer dresses. Philip has now curated Isabel Jarvis's Spring Summer 24 collection. We have the Indian prints for a hot day and for a windy day, which can sometimes happen in Cap Dagged. Then I like your monochrome section. <laughs> she wants to rock black sunglasses because she does have quite large black sunglasses. And this one can be jazzed up for the evening. Mm -hmm. Important. Very important. I'm sure Percy's going to want to go on the razzle dazzle. And then the sunshiny orange section which i love this one is particularly pretty on mummy and finally the dramatic red evening wear and that's for a cooler evening and a warmer evening i think she's going to love it i love the way philip has very specifically 
balanced it between a couple of the dresses she wears all the time, such as this green one, and then ones that she doesn't wear very often because she forgets she has them. And if we <laughs> just take the ones that she wears all the time, there'll be no difference and no excitement for Percy. Also, it's <laughs> no excitement for... <laughs> I know, but no, you know, a whole new wife for Percy. I was mainly checking as well what fabric they were because it's going to be yeah. so warm in the South. No but... polyester. Exactly. Our work here is done. Philip's found matching shoes, matching jewellery, matching hats. She's going to be so happy. And I've popped in her perfume, some little toiletries. Ready for your first ever summer mini break. I'd call it a summer holiday, but it's three days. You've done a test one before I go. I love you so much. You are a wonderful, wonderful woman. I know you the way to your heart. Oh my goodness. Mm. Yeah? Not only the heart, it's captivated the soul as well. Oh my goodness, things have got substantially worse. I think I'd better close this window quite quickly. I cannot believe that this is going to be the weather here whilst we're away. Is she feeling slightly better about going to the heat? Bye bye, lovely. You Missing you already. Love, but more. <laughs> bye, beautiful. We don't have at least two parties. Two parties, okay, make them big ones. Bye. Thank God, bye. We have had the most horrifying start to a holiday that um, I have ever experienced because we arrived at the house and um, we don't know, we still don't know what happened. But he suddenly started swelling up. Uh, yeah, swelling up so fast. And of course, uh, we've just we've just been to the emergency vet, which was uh, 45 minutes away. I think you got here a little bit faster than that, I must admit. And I was trying to phone every vet. Philip and I were both on the phone going, our dog is dying, our dog is dying, because I've never seen anything so swollen. Now they've told us that they're almost certain he's going to be okay. He's actually less swollen now. He's had two massive injections. He's got a lot of cortisone in his system and he started perking up. He was just so still and silent all the way here. And now he started sniffing around his in the vets. His body is still completely We didn't swollen. think we'd be taking him home with us this evening. We thought they'd keep him in, but no, they've said that we can take him back. He's got tablets for the next few days, but if he's still that swollen tomorrow, I thought we'd lost him. I know. He just growled. That's the first sound he has made. I know, I'd never since be happy about that. I've never been so happy to hear a little growl. And his tail, that's the first time know. his tail has worked since this happened. Boy, oh, it's a little growl. A little Darling, that was the longest 45 minutes of my life. Well, let's face it, half an hour of my life with your father driving here. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. We thought we'd lost you. She says it has to be an allergic reaction, but, but so because it was his normal food, yeah. she thinks maybe there was an insect we didn't see and he swallowed it and it stung him. It is the single most terrifying thing to see that happen so quickly. Philip nearly couldn't get his collar off in time. It was going to strangle him. Oh, and the poor thing has been so brave. We're on our way back from the vet and uh, it was worse news than, than I was hoping for because they said that it's not what the vet last night said. It's not an edema, it's an emphysema. An edema is a buildup of water uh, caused by an allergic reaction, for example. Uh, an emphysema is a buildup of air. The vet thinks that what happens is that he's had a puncture wound and because it's not external, it must be internal. So possibly the trachea or the lungs. And that let air in under his skin uh, as he breathed in. Um, and they've done an x-ray and they can't see, thank God, anything wrong with his lungs or in fact his trachea. But in fact, there's nowhere else that the air is coming from. So they're just concerned that the x-ray isn't showing it. He needs a scan. They don't want to give him a scan today because it's more traumatic and he has to be um, put to sleep. So they're going to keep him in today because they said if it's a small puncture wound, then usually it just heals by itself. That's the good news. And he just needs to be watched so that it doesn't worsen. And they might try and let all the air out under his skin so they can see if it's reinflating. Then they'll know if it's still there, if there's still a puncture wound. Um, if it's a bad puncture wound, then that's a whole different story, but there's no sign of that yet. They're keeping him in today. This afternoon, we'll get a call telling us whether we can bring him home for the night or not, or if they want to keep him overnight and give him a scan tomorrow. So that's the situation as it is. 
absolutely heartbreaking to leave him there. Even though it was a lovely place, they're so lovely and really caring and very thorough. And thank goodness they found this. I just I felt something was wrong this morning. It wasn't going down quickly enough for an allergic reaction with the amount of cortisone he had. We should have seen a quicker improvement, but I'm reassuring myself that there was a bit of an improvement. So hopefully that means that it's not still a bad ongoing problem. So thank goodness for you because you really you didn't sleep at all you were so worried yeah well i'll take the opportunity to sleep this afternoon no, he's, he's not with us yet at all 5 30 is when they'll call so i will i will update you as soon as i hear anything we've just heard from the vet and actually clinically he's been doing really well they managed to syringe off the air 600 milliliters of air and he hasn't puffed up again so we're jumping in the car right now to go and pick him up because she's made the decision that um, now that he's clinically much better, he's emotionally much worse and that he really needs to be with us. Apparently he's, he's very anxious and distressed. So although we're worried about an emergency in the night and having go, to go back to the place that misdiagnosed him because that's the only place for the middle of the night, um, she's going to write everything down that's happened and she doesn't think that's going to happen. She thinks that the, the worst case scenario is probably just that he'll start to puff up again in the night because there's still a little puncture wound maybe, in which case we'll go back to her tomorrow for the full scan. So I think we've got to let the vet decide and the vet thinks that the best thing is to look after his emotional health as well. And that means being with us. So we're on our way there now. It's only now that we know he's doing clinically better that I've actually been able to look up and see that where we are is actually very beautiful. I think we slept collectively, what, eight hours last night? I had... Well, today, I mean. Um, I've had, I had, I managed to sleep for three hours this afternoon. What about and you? I slept four, four. And it means we'll sleep better tonight than we last a lot between us, I suspect. I don't think we're going to sleep better with we sleep between us. <laughs> no, but at least we'll be close to yes, him. Yes, absolutely. In a way, it's good news that he's able to show that he's anxious because he wouldn't have had the strength to show that this morning or last night. He was just focusing on Breathing. existing. Yeah. So if he's back to his usual annoying self. annoying self, I will be absolutely delighted. Well, we were hoping to find him a little bit more active and he's still quite swollen, but they say that they took the 600 milliliters and there's still air there, but it should go down by itself over time. He's on quite a bit of morphine, so that's probably why he's also quite sleepy and he just, he won't go anywhere but cling to me. So I'm just going to keep him here. We can't put a collar or anything on him anyway, because he cannot have even a harness at the moment. Nothing for a few days, so. Oh. Oh, hello darling. Oh. Lancelot's absolutely exhausted and we're certainly not going anywhere tonight. So Philip stopped at the supermarket. To buy shoes. He bought shoes at the <laughs> supermarket. Which oh, I... That's for drills. That's a really good idea. Well, I thought that they were good for here, you know? It's perfect. Perfect. And they were like seven euros. So I was like, great. Um, so what are we having tonight with your parents? Oh, we're having a hammer. Um... <laughs> something i don't no, know that's for cab dagged uh, because we've got the painting to put up oh what a um, good idea okay we've got a selection of dog treats obviously we can't have them right now but as soon as he is better oh my god how many dog treats do you think he needs so what happened is that you told me to get him a selection yep. which i did i got him this one and this is one he usually has and then these yes and then i had a bag full of what are these like like half full and then I realized that these were supposed to go into these things. So I decanted them in, th in this, but it was like half and one This is a very long convoluted Basically, drawing. I had to add more because they were per box. Okay. And I had gone over the limit of one box. So. Well, Spud can have some as well. Absolutely. And otherwise, Lance is very lucky. <laughs> <laughs> we're heading back to the house now and we can just rest and rest with the little one. Lancelot is finally sleeping. We've come outside find it much more soothing out here but it's quite windy and I don't want him to get cold so we wrapped him up and we're just lying in the most beautiful place and I think the more he sleeps right now the better.
Exactly. It's a make your own burger station. So I've made caramelized onions. You are amazing. I uh, cannot believe you've been in here fried onion. cooking. And there's mayonnaise and ketchup and mustard. There is nothing I would rather have. Thank you. Good. What would you like? Oh, and then there's Oh, burger. how about burger? <laughs> Would you let me put some on? Or what is your preferred Oh, caramelised onions. I don't mind at all. The video ends very abruptly there because half an hour later, Lancelot took a turn for the worse. We rushed him back to the emergency vet and they kept him in overnight and he was going to have a scan at seven o'clock the next morning. But they called us a couple of hours later saying that he hadn't made it. I'm so sorry. I'm actually much better now. I don't like it, but... This all happened three days ago because I had pre-filmed three days of videos so that we could have our first ever, actually, summer holiday without me filming or editing anything with the family in the South with Lancelot. And that happened when we arrived. So I've spent those days at my aunt's house. That's where I am now. We've just been mourning and trying to come to terms with what's happened. Um, and. The only thing that I have found that's given me solace is a quote from Einstein. I can't remember exactly how it's phrased, but that everything is energy and energy can't be created or destroyed. It can only change form. And that, that thought helps me a lot. Being here has helped me a lot, being with my aunt and uncle. And Philip, if you're watching this video, it's because Philip is editing this video for me because I am absolutely incapable of filming or editing at the moment. There won't be a video tomorrow. This is the last video for a few days. I can't film at the moment because there's nothing to share with you. I have nothing at the moment to give, but I know that that will change because it's already changing. Day one was catastrophic. Day two, I had lovely moments during the day. And then day three, I laughed for the first time. And I never thought in my life, you know, I didn't even want a dog. I never thought that I could grieve like this over a tiny creature who's left an enormous hole in our hearts. And if I'm feeling like this, you can imagine how Philip's feeling and how Marie is feeling and everyone, the whole family are devastated. But I know he had the happiest, happiest life. He was always cheerful. He was the most wonderful dog. He was annoying and temperamental and absolutely marvellous. And I wouldn't have wanted to change a single thing about him. We were utterly devoted to each other. And I wanted to end this on a happier memory. And so I have a bit of footage that came from the end of one of the patron days. One of our patrons brought him a lovely flamingo and he was so excited from the moment he saw this flamingo because the two things he loved most in the whole world were toys the newer the better the newest toy was always the favorite toy and playing with other dogs this, he loved those and in this clip you'll see he's delighted by the flamingo and he gets to play with it with his best friends <laughs> Lancelot's received a new toy from one of the patrons and look, look, look at this excitement. Oh my goodness, he cannot believe his luck. Good boy, four. There we go, good boy down. Good boy, sit. Sit, good boy. There we go. Oh. You straight off with it. Oh no! Grab it, darling, grab it. <laughs> You've got to admit that is the best dog in the world. It's done. <laughs> oh, uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> He's protecting the flamingo. And Lancelot has the flamingo again. Oh, Dexter is showing an interest in the flamingo. So, Taos doesn't want the flamingo, but doesn't want Lancelot to have the flamingo. And there he goes. There, he's spotted his opportunity. He's off with the flamingo. They have distracted themselves. And Lancelot is making a bid for freedom. Come on, Lancelot, you can do it. Ah, drat, and the flamingo's gone. But he's outwitted them again, and he's off in the other direction. 